Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for your crypto neo, your news, education, and opportunities. I'll be your host today, Jacob. And before we get started today, I'd just like to let everybody know about some of the new opportunities that we're going to have here in this crypto space. And so one of the things that we uh, like to talk about is the unique incentive structures that are built uh, based off of new innovations. And a great example, if you'd like a previous video, would be our Deeper Network Deep Dive. But today we're going to be talking about Web3 Gaming and specifically the Polyum 1. What is the Polyum 1? Well, it's this super unique uh, console. It's a Web3 gaming console. Now, I will start off with a quick disclaimer. This console has brought a lot of mixed reviews, to say the least. And while it's not a product that you can currently use right now, and it's not circulating around, it is something that is interesting. And uh, one of the things that a lot of gamers had to say about it in particular was the design choice of their logo, which looks eerily similar to the Nintendo GameCube logo, which, you know, if anybody who knows Nintendo knows that uh, <laughs> they don't like their assets being used by anybody in any likeness. So that's going to be an interesting interesting case. The Web3 is labeled as the future of the internet and is the idea for a new version of the World Wide Web. It incorporates technologies like NFTs, cryptocurrencies, and more. However, with the emergence of Polyum 1, it's left tech users scratching their heads. You may be wondering what it is. Well, it's a gaming console for the Web3 space that is multi-chain, allowing you to play games across different ecosystems like Solana, BNB, Harmony, EOS, Wax, my personal favorite, Immutable X, and just a quick shout out to Gods Unchained, which uh, if you haven't played Gods Unchained, oh, if, if you're like me and card games scratch that itch for you, it's a good game. It's a, it's, a, it's a real good game. Even though it's still technically in beta. And Polygon. The company claims that the console is powerful enough to run games of a high-end magnitude and is a way to onboard new users into the Web3 space without them ever knowing they're being onboarded into the Web3 space, which is important for adoption. Part of the big problem that cryptocurrency has is that it's a niche space, um, realistically. And unless you have a cross community of different spaces, like how Deeper Network is doing it with VPN hardware meets crypto, or how um, Helium Network is creating new radio infrastructure across the entire United States, all over the world, Europe, like Asia, just everywhere. Um, if you're not doing something innovative in that likeness of tying crypto into like other markets to disrupt them and kind of flip that profit incentive, then you're not really giving a reason to join crypto. And so this is kind of one of those interesting ways that kind of flips that because with a console like this, I could see it kind of taking off, um, being able to have the time you invest in a game be redeemable for crypto assets like NFTs and cryptocurrency. And I do see that being a very big deal. However, is this the console that's going to bring that to the forefront? I don't know. But, I mean, the tech specs seem to be pretty decent. Um, it includes a 4K Ultra HD and 8K HDR. It mentions 4K and 8K gaming as separate features. 
uh, 120 frames per second, touch ID, ray tracing. It's claimed to use Apple's exclusive touch ID technology to make sure that crypto transactions are secure, which seems like a stretch and impossible. So keep in mind that this is something that it would be one thing if they had said that they their whole touch ID was um, not based off of Apple. Um, based off of this article here, that's what they're saying. Do I personally know? No. And I'd love to be able to show you their website, but for whatever reason, it's down right now. Yeah. So we won't waste too much time on that. But we can see... Why didn't it sit well with the public? Well, I said earlier, the Nintendo GameCube logo was a, a big point for a lot of people. And also many tech enthusiasts expressed concerns over the console and the reason that it was uh, no functional prototype. But the company claims it'll be ready in a few months. If you want any updates, you can actually go to their Twitter directly. And you can see their pinned tweet and some of their most recent tweets. You know, they are kind of being laughed at at the moment, but this is something that could be surprising. Do I think that it's an opportunity in this space? There's definitely an opportunity for Web3 Gaming. And I think Web3 Gaming can onboard millions and upon millions of new users. And if done correctly, can bring the forefront of adoption for cryptocurrency. The problem is I don't see the best execution being done by Polyam. That's my personal take on it. But if they have a working product, um, you know, I am the type of person to shell out the cash to see if it's worth anything at all. <laughs> and it would be fun to be able to do a review here on Wise Beyond Bitcoin. So it is something that I'm looking forward to getting to my hands, testing, seeing what's possible with the device. And even if it lives up to, you know, their whole spiel, their whole claim to fame, so to speak. Now, I think that with the criticisms that's been happening, it's pretty meme worthy. Um, and I think they got memed pretty hard in the opposite direction. But I do think that rather than having a Web3 gaming console, that having a software hub similar to Steam that anybody can download on, you know, Android, iOS, Mac, uh, Windows, Linux, if you can get, you know, that Web3 hub to work similar to Steam, where all you have to do is just, quote unquote, make an account and an account can just be your wallet, right? And have your wallet, then you would attach a soul bound token to that wallet that represents your entire play history, your player data, and you would collect tradable uh, NFTs um, you know, in as terms of cosmetics and in-game items. I could see that working really well if everything was on the software end and if you really hashed out all of those features. And I hope somebody takes that idea and runs with it because in my opinion, it's a good one. I don't have the technical knowledge to be able to code software myself on that scale <laughs> but um it'd be something that's very interesting and i feel the lack of real follow-through from polyam is something that is concerning for me do i think it's a rug pull a little bit yeah do i think the idea was bad not at all 
it's the poor execution that really turns me off for this project. And while it is an opportunity, there's gonna be plenty more opportunities. And I think being able to build something like a mutable X marketplace mixed with, you know, the experience that you would have on Steam, especially with their rise to fame with the new, um, where is it? Can I pull that up? Me doxing myself with my Steam account. <laughs> The Steam Deck. So imagine a gaming device and gaming consoles that are already out, already gaining popularity, and you just develop software that works with it, that just blends with it, where you can download apps on, let's say, your already existing gaming consoles and play games that are developed in that space, and you could earn tokens based off of, you know, arbitrary in-game tasks or time-based game time based um there's a lot of things that you can do to think of incentive structures and i think when we think more so about how can we bring a merger between the web 2 and the web 3 into gaming it just sounds like to me that creating a new console is kind of the wrong direction Consoles are being created with new, better hardware all the time. And if you want mass adoption, create something similar to the Steam store where I can go here and I could check out all the different games. Let's just choose like action, right? All these different games and they go on sale. Imagine if there is an incentive structure by playing games that you can earn tokens to be able to buy more games. So by playing games, you have the opportunity to be exposed to more games. Imagine being able to sell your collectibles like Team Fortress 2, which I will show you some of their collectibles if uh let me just team fortress 2 is a game that i used to play a lot market there we go Over here to search Team Fortress 2, or actually Counter Strike Global Offensive is a great example too. You can see these in game items are worth actual cash. And it's kind of crazy to see some of these in game items worth what they're worth. Imagine if this in game item was sellable for cryptocurrency that you could then use to redeem for cash. Whereas with this particular um, you know, model here, you can sell it for $432, but it's locked into the Steam ecosystem in a way where you can only use that money to buy more Steam games or Steam items. And realistically, if you were to create that ability for people to take their in-game items and redeem the value for them, you're redeeming the value that they spent in game. So then there's value creation by playing the game. Those are the incentive structures that I think are gonna change Web3 and gaming. And I really hope that Polyum inspires more brands to make that push. I really hope you guys enjoyed your time here today. And until the next one, namaste.